Hello, welcome back to the Villa View. It's time for a match preview for Villa's visit to Derby this weekend. So we're actually not on TV for the first time in what feels like ages for this game as we head to Pride Pod to face Frank Lampard's Derby, their newly christened name. It's going to be a tough one, isn't it, this, this week, Dan? Yeah, I think, I mean, Norwich away was obviously a bit of a, a tough one. We, end, we ended up losing. We could to catch teams at the, at the wrong times, even like QPR as well. They were on a bit of a yeah, decent yeah. run when we caught them away from home. So it, it is a tough test. We, we didn't do well there last season either when, when we went to to Pride Park. Is it even called Pride Park anymore? So it'll be, it'll be a tough game. They're, they're riding relatively high at the moment. They'll have aspirations to go up under Lampard. He's done a, he's done a good job since he's gone in there, which to be honest, is good to see. It's good to see a young English manager come in and, and do well, kind of start in the right way rather than getting a, a massive job immediately. He's kind of learning his trade, but, he, but he's doing well and he's implemented some good stuff at Derby. So it'll be a tough game, but we're coming off the back of a win. So although I'm not massively confident going into it, I'm not, I'm not going into it thinking we're definitely going to get beat either. I think it'll be a decent game and there's every chance we could come away with something. You just touched on it there, but what have you made of, of Frank Lampard's managerial career so far? I mean, he's, he's, he's pretty much come in and he's come in with, with fresh ideas. He wants them to play with, with high intensity. He's, he's used the loan market pr pretty yeah. well. He's got the lad Marriott, who was at Peterborough last season, who had a good day against us at Villa Park last season in the FA Cup. So he suddenly got into the team recently and he's been banging in some goals. It's just, it's just fresh, isn't it, for, for Derby? It's, it's like... Bit like Villa, it was the same old stuff, wasn't it, with Bruce? And they were probably feeling that way with some of their previous managers as well. They got Lampard in, and it's fresh and it's it's innovative, and you kind of get you don't get a free reign, but I think you get more leeway when you you can see that you're trying to implement something. And I think yeah. Dean Smith will definitely get that at Villa, and I think Frank Lampard's had that at Derby as well. But he's actually having success as well, pretty early doors in his career. Yeah, you sort of you expect Smith to get that bit of extra leeway as well, being you know being the local lad sort of thing, but. When you can see that you're trying to do something, you go, okay, well, short term might not might not be plain sailing, but like, I've remember doing these with you in the past and thinking like, what are Villa? What are we trying to do here? And that was frustrating to, to be able to look at it and go, I don't know what we're doing. At least now, if things aren't going perfectly and you're not winning, you're not winning games all the time. You can at least look at it and go, okay, we're trying to do this, and this is who Villa are now. Like the Championship is, there'll there'll be a time where they'll have a really bad run. It, it'll happen, I'm sure yeah. they'll go on a run of defeats and you'll get probably like Villa you'll get some fans that are, are impatient but in the main I think he'll get a bit of leeway because because of who he is a little bit as well he's a he's a big yeah. name isn't he Lampard he's a, he's a likeable character he's someone I've always liked when he was a player and he speaks very well as a manager and that, that's the thing as well when you come into the interviews he's, he's talking sense and he's explaining what he's trying to do much like Villa with Smith so you get more leeway because you're actually not treating the fans like mugs you, you're treating them like people that understand football so yeah I think they'll be up, up and around the top six I'm like us I'm not, I'm not convinced on, on automatics I don't think they'll get automatics but I can definitely see them in the in the playoff picture and even if they don't go up this season I think next season they'll perhaps be, be stronger but obviously Lampard is doing a good job because they're they're pretty high up in the table already I was listening to uh, Smith's press conference earlier, which is a rarity that we get to hear it before we record these days. That is rare. Um, he mentioned that he's been to, to play Derby away already this season with Brentford. Will him, having managed there already with Brentford, have any sort of impact on us in a, in a positive or negative way that we know what to expect from Derby playing at home? Maybe because it was literally like, I think it was six or seven weeks ago. I think it, it helps in the respect that he might know a bit more what to expect from the opposition, because you'd imagine they're probably set up in a, in a similar way, but on the flip side of that, he's managing a completely different team with that will yeah. have will have deficiencies that Brentford didn't have, and that will have strengths that they didn't have. So I guess you take it by game by game basis. Anyway, it certainly won't do us any harm him having been there all season. But sorry, having already been there this season. But I think I've heard a few people say that I think Smith's only won one away game. Yeah. All season, both with Brentford and, and Villa. So, but sooner or later, we will have to win an, an away game. We haven't won one since the first game of the season away from home, have we, if, if I recall? Oh, I'm not sure. You're testing my knowledge there. And sooner or later, Smith will have to win an away game. So let's just hope it's Saturday and we go into that all-important derby game against Birmingham riding high. Um, just a, a few notes that I took down earlier in my, in my research. I was looking at the form guide. Um, derby a fourth. It, it highlights the last six and they've won three, drawn three, so you know, not lost for six games at least. 
Uh, played Birmingham last game out, two goals in three minutes in the second half. Yeah, I think they were losing at half time and came back out second half, all guns blazing. Uh, Jack Marriott scored uh, three and six, uh, five and six, my terrible handwriting. Is he sort of the, the one you look at and go, he's the main the main man to watch out for? Or is it just a team of, of a lot of good players? I think they're working as a cohesive unit at the moment. I think they all yeah. know their jobs. I think you look at their their back four and they've kind of all been been around the block and both games actually against Derby, we just we just couldn't seem to break them down last season. Curtis Davis yeah. and Keogh, they're, they're both good championship defenders, aren't they? I don't really like Keogh particularly. There's something about his face that I've never warmed to. I just, <laughs> I just don't like him. But they're, they're, in previous Derby sides, they've defended very deep and, and defended well. I, I, having not seen them live, I'm, I'd imagine they push, push up a bit more under Frank Lampard because they'll be trying to play more expansively than they yeah. would have done un, under Rowett. But... Mason Mount's done well, hasn't he? Obviously, had an England call up since he's been since he's been at Derby. Although I think, don't think he's had a goal or an assist since September, so he's hitting a bit of a, a dry patch. The lad Wilson as well on loan from Liverpool. He scored a, a couple of free kicks, but as I said earlier, Marriott had a good day against Villa last season. Some of his goals that I've seen this season, he's just he's a good finisher. So they get they give him the chance. He'll, he'll more than likely take it. And in general, that's where Villa have struggled this season. We've given away chances but I mean even against Bolton even I thought we played well they still could have quite easily scored couldn't they from us looking a bit yeah. of a shambles at the back so I wouldn't put money on a Villa clean sheet if, if I was a betting man and there's a few players to watch out for but Derby will be looking at us now and thinking oh god they've got some they've got some good players as well Jack Grealish maybe is just about going to come into a run of form he's, he's had a good game usually when he has a good game he goes on a sustained spell that's what that's what he did last season Abraham's got a decent goal record since he's been here as well. We're trying to we're trying to play Codger into into form. We could do with him getting on the score sheet, but we're now starting to look a bit more like a unit as well. So it should be a good game. During the rest of my extensive research, I was actually looking for like a Derby fan channel or something, but didn't find anything. But there was like a twenty minute like post match interview type thing on on a Derby's YouTube channel, and they got like a studio set up, and they got ex player talking about about the game against Birmingham. Um, oh, there was a stat they talked about about how many different goal scorers they'd had. They've played. They've used twenty six players, which is the most in the championship. So they've got squad depth. Keo, your mate, is the first, is the only one to start in every game, and they've had thirteen different goal scorers with twelve different players making assists. And they were sort of talking about this 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 depth they've got that if a player gets injured, like Mount, someone else comes in and scores the goal. And, and so you're looking at their squad and going, okay, well they've got areas throughout the whole squad that are dangerous for teams to come up against and that is obviously the mark of a successful side. Yeah, like you mentioned their media stuff as well. It's it's very, very good. If you haven't watched any of Derby's yeah. media stuff, it's, it's a really good good watch and they've got a really good setup there, which is good to say, in my opinion, that's how, how football YouTube should be. It's, it's top draw. So obviously now they've got off the pitch and on the pitch, but both going well. So moving on to our media and our press conference from today, I've highlighted a few quotes that sort of stood out to me. The first one it opened with, he sort of said like, all I want the players to do is win the ball back. It, it's not rocket science. And I was just like, oh, that's nice to hear. Like someone who wants to play with a pressing, intense style and we can watch and sit back and go, at least they're putting some kind of effort in. I like that. It sounds quite simple, doesn't it? But obviously it's, yeah. uh, when players have been playing in a, in a certain way like they have done for the, the last few years, it, it, it's difficult to kind of switch and, and get it right straight away. But they they will get it right. And I think it's probably more intricate than than we all think than we all think it is. There'll be some nuances to it that we won't have even thought of. And it, it's not as simple as just saying press, and that's it. Yeah. You've got to do it at the right times. And there'll be there'll be ways of doing it in all kinds of timings that we that we don't know about. But it's the modern way, isn't it? And you just want to. You felt like we were getting left behind in that kind of thing. They say. I mean, last season we weren't doing those kind of things, but we were winning games. But it was like the game had just completely moved to a different level this season because we were doing nothing that good teams were doing and we, we looked all over the place. But it, it'll take time. But the early signs are good and it, it suits a lot of our players, especially our midfielders, to be more involved in the game and have more in the yeah. ball. And also they're capable of doing that pressing that Smith talks about. So I mean, maybe it doesn't suit Whelan and Yednak who are obviously in their... Uh, mid to late thirties, it doesn't suit them, but the other midfielders that, that we have, it suits them to a T the way that Smith wants to play. Another topic that was brought up that seems to be wherever you look Villa, this is this is talked about and that's goalkeepers. Um Smith said that he always says, as long as your goalkeepers keep the ball out of my net, I'm happy. And that's what he says to goalkeeping coaches and things like that. He says that uh, the guy that's come in, is it uh Cutler? Cutler, yeah. 
And he says that his attention to detail is phenomenal, and almost too much attention to detail for what he needs to know about. Um, but obviously, we get comments on our videos all the time that Nealon's not good enough, Bun's not good enough, whatever, what we're going to do. We can't sign anyone until January at least anyway, if we even will do that, and I don't personally think we will. So will this crop of goalkeepers come good, do you think? Or are we just being a little bit too impatient or are the signs there that this won't work? I mean, it was Dolan asking the press conference questions because he, he couldn't, couldn't wait to shove, shoehorn the goalkeeper in <laughs> to the podcast in, in midweek. It's, it's difficult, difficult to know, isn't it? I mean, I don't think Nealon's been helped by the way Villa has been. He, he's yeah. not covered himself in glories on a num number of occasions, but there's actually been times where he's played well as well. He's definitely got things he can work on. He's got, he's got strengths and he's got weaknesses like any player, but if, if Neil Cutler's as good as we all think he's going to be and, and what we've heard so far, he's good. That can't do anything but help Neil. And then yeah. I said in the podcast, when he's playing in front of the, the whole end, it, it can be an intimidating player. Pl pl outfield players are buckled under the pressure of playing with the whole end behind them. And I think it, it, I, I've noticed that he's having better game, he's having better halves when he's up by the, by the north stand than he is when he's in front, in front of the hole. And so I think there is that element of pressure, maybe being away a little bit. We'll see him. I don't recall him making a, making a mistake in the, in the QPR game, the away game last time out. Although then I look back to the Norwich game and he, he probably could have done better for, for at least one of the goals. As you say, we can't do anything about it. So you may as well show a bit of patience because I, I, I don't think the other two are going are gonna to be number one any time yeah. soon by the looks of things. So Nealon's the number one. Like I said, he's settled on that back four. I think he's settled on the goalkeeper and he's going to try and work with him and improve him, get him, get him into the, the mould that Smith wants or that Neil Cutler wants. I mean, Neil Cutler's worked with Smith before, which will be helpful as well. So we've just got to stick with him and get behind him. I mean, undoubtedly, he'll probably make another mistake before January, but keepers make mistakes. And yeah, okay, he's probably made more than he should have done, but Villa hasn't been an easy place to be at the start of this season for me. Smith said it's, it's not really about the mistakes, it's about what you do after that, or how you recover from it. I think that's the most important thing. And there's a lot of, in these notes that I've noted down, that Smith is saying a lot of, the, of, of the, the right things. And obviously that's always important to hear the manager saying the right things, but we also need to see some action of that. And I, I believe under, under Smith, we will see that. Yeah. I, sitting down and watching this press conference today for the seven minutes or however long it was, I was like, Okay, I sort of I almost feel relaxed of listening to Smith. I'm 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 in. I'm I'm invested in it now. Yeah. Whereas you'd flick on to Bruce before and think, I'm not really hearing anything. Like it's just it feels like just words. I don't know what nothing's really being said. There's no there's no there's no aim to any of it. With Smith, I sort of turn it on, sit down. And I'm I'm just engaged. I'm with football and I'm there and I'm with him. It almost makes you want to jump on Football Manager straight away. Why? Oh, we all know that you don't fancy that at the moment. No, no, I'll be all right. Once you, once you hear Smith talks, it does make you want to want to do things like that. Whereas the Bruce press conferences, they would just become insane. Like the same thing was yeah. being said every time and stuff he was saying wasn't necessarily true and he was reinventing history a little bit. That made me not want to do anything to do with football after yeah. I listened to those press conferences. It's just refreshing, isn't it? I think Bruce had run, run his course, really. It, it wasn't happening anymore, so... To have someone like Smith, who's the complete real opposite of Bruce, isn't he? Really, in the way he he sees the game and, want, and wants the game to be played. Like you say, you just become invested in it. And we'll have some bad days under Smith, and we'll, we could very well have bad yeah. runs under Smith. But again, that fact that you know there's some kind of plan and that there's stuff going on in, in the week because you're getting to hear about it, it's just refreshing for us as Villa fans now. There was, there was one part where you mentioned that uh, JT had got the defenders in to watch videos of like Napoli and Chelsea, I think it was, to like watch how they defend as a unit and how they work together. And it was just that tiny little detail that we don't really need to hear about. It doesn't really mean anything really. No, but, but I like that. Now. It's just that nice little detail to go, oh yeah, these coaches are doing something with these players at last. If you're like me and, and like you, obviously, then you want to know. All these little things, you find it fascinating the day-to-day -day yeah, yeah. in the workings of, of a football club. And this is just the kind of thing we weren't hearing yeah. before. So hearing that JT's got the defenders into... Uh, Napoli, Napoli are a very, very good side. Probably one of the best sides I've watched yeah. this season. And that, like you said, they're, they're, a, they're a unit. They press. They probably play a similar kind of football that we're, we want to play and that we're trying to ad adapt to. So seeing that and hearing, hearing that is, is just great. And finally, what will end on team news as the press conference did... Burke, be honest with you, he's fit now, he's trained the full week. Would do you think that he'll come straight in now for probably Horan? I mean, that, I think that'll be the only change if there is one. Okay. 
Part of me thinks he'll put Bjarnason and strike back in because he's probably perceived as being slightly more defensive than Connor. But then the other half of me thinks as well, if we want to play this, this football and Derby will come and play football against us as well, we kind of may as well try and match them if that, if that yeah. makes sense and play our better f- footballers and try, and try that midfield against a better opposition. Because I don't, I don't think Villa fans in general would expect to go to Derby and win. I mean, you can tell that Lampard's had more time with Derby than Smith has with Villa. But part of me thinks, why not just go for it and go there? And like we said, that we played that midfield in the last game because it was against weaker opposition. Why not try it? Yeah. Against harder opposition, let let let's be brave. Let's let's take the game to Derby, and that's kind of what Smith's philosophy is is all about. You don't you don't really change your principles for anyone. We're Villa. Let's go there. Let's let's try and play football and let's try and get a win. And if if we play three it's more attacking midfielders and we ship, we ship a, ship a goal or two, there's every chance we might score three or four if we really, really click. So it's only going to get better by, by playing them all together. So I, yeah, I, everyone knows I'm a big horror fan, fan anyway, as, as people say to me on the YouTube comments and on Twitter every week. But why not just try it? Yeah, and I don't think that uh, Bjarnason is as much as a defensive change to the squad as bringing no. in a Yedinak or a Wheeling is. No, so you can well. sort of get away with changing those two specifically. Yeah, and Connor's not played every week as he will have had a decent break over the summer so he's probably relatively fresh as well to be honest yeah. he was obviously at the World Cup I mean he hasn't played every week either but they're good options to have two very very good players at this level vying, vying for a spot in the team so I think, I think it's great I agree with you that that will be the only change if there is one so move on to predictions to end yeah, I'm going to be brave I'm going to go 2-1 to Villa ok I've gone the opposite <laughs> I've gone for 2-0 to Derby I would never like coming on and, and suggesting we'll lose, but... It was 2-0 two, two last season. I remember going, I wanna, it was absolutely I want to try, try and get my prediction to right rather than be positive all the time, but like you say, there's, there's every chance we go there, and if we come away with any kind of positive result, I'd be, I'd be over the moon with that. Derby are definitely going to be up in the top six, I think. Yeah. You said earlier, you're not quite sure on top two. At this stage, I wouldn't be so sure against it. Um, it just depends, like you say, that they've had a great start and they're playing very well. But will this new manager and this this squad, this energetic squad, will they run out of steam at some point and, and slip out? There's there's every chance for that as well. So sort of that head and heart situation. Hoping we we, we can get something, but I'm going to go two 0 Derby for this one. Well, it's always good to talk to you, Derby County fan Dan Rollinson. <laughs> I've done my research, mate. I'm all over it. Thank you very much for watching this match preview. If you have enjoyed it, then if you could give it a like, that would be great for the channel. Thank you very much for all your support. We all really, really appreciate it. Comment below with your predictions. Are you being brave like me or are you a negative Nigel like Dan Rollinson? Do let us know in the comments. If you're not already subscribed to the mess that is the Villa View, as you saw in the podcast the other day, then if you could do that, that would be absolutely fantastic. And if you haven't watched that podcast and in particular, the first two minutes you'll wonder well if you have if you do watch it you'll wonder how we've got 13,000 subscribers but do check that out I think after that first two minutes it is a good watch we'll be back with a podcast at some point next week I'm not sure who's in the booth we haven't sorted any of that stuff out as you can see we're very very organized but there will be a podcast of some description next week and maybe some other videos as well one video I do know that is coming up is a documentary on Sunday first kind of foray into that kind of thing for the villa view so make sure you're checking that out on sunday if you've got your post notifications on you'll know it's coming before anyone else here's hoping for three points away at derby on saturday up the villa if you enjoyed that video why not watch another one click one of the video options on screen now and if you don't mind subscribe to the channel thanks for watching